Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah, coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, you know, of all praise is the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past, in order to get a much better understanding of the things that are currently happening on the earth, so we may better anticipate the things that are soon to come on the earth. This evening, we're going to jump into a, a new topic. The Most High has uh, put in my heart and given me some information that I'm going to bring to the nation. We're going to talk about a battle, a great battle, the battle of all time. And um, this battle, when you have this kind of a battle, it should leave remnants that would uh, let you know where this battle has taken place. This um, engagement was called the 100,000 Giant War. It was a war between the armies of Nimrod and the armies of Og, the giant. That's what we're going to be getting into this evening. You know, this great battle, one like never has happened before and will never happen again, left remnants of bones, skeletons, weapons, you know, and in order to mark the place where this great battle occurred. And when you find out where this, uh, battle occurred, you'll realize where all things began. When you read the Bible, it uh, in Genesis, it mentions the giants a little bit, but not in great detail. We know that uh, Og survived the flood, and we know that Moses was the one that ended Og's life. But beyond that, we have very little information. So we're going to have to go through different books and through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring this information together to give a much better understanding. This won't be the last time that we uh, touch on this subject because some of these other books are bringing more knowledge and understanding as soon as you learn how to parse through the lies and then find the, uh, the diamonds and bring them together in order to feel, uh, to, uh, you know, field a much better understanding of this great battle of the 100,000 giant war. Okay. So, you know, this is a definitely something because um, many people love to say that you can't look at anything other than the Bible because there's no antediluvian research to support these other books like um, Enoch. Okay. And, uh, but the thing is, is that a lot of this information has been hidden and you're going to see that as well. There was plenty of information, um, skeletal remains, archeological, um, findings that will support that this great battle happened here in what is now known as the Americas. But that information was hidden because, um, the powers that be wanted everyone to believe that the beginning of all things was in the so-called Middle East when it was actually over here. Now we know that after the watchers abandoned their position and came down here and had um, relations with women that they bore children that were giants and part of the, their punishment was that they were going to have to uh, do battle with each other and kill each other off. We'll talk about that a little bit shortly. Right now, we're going to read from the book of Jubilees. Take a look here at uh, 22. Jubilees, uh, this is a verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 22. And they begat sons, the Nephilim, and they were all unlike, and they devoured one another. And the giants slew the Nephil, Nephil and the Nephil slew the Ilioi, and the Ilioi of mankind, and one man another. 
it was set up where there these um, all these different uh, entities, these different uh, species, were going to battle with each other and ultimately destroy each other. Now, through these battles, you would think that there would be uh, remnants, bones, skeletons, weapons, um, you know, their palaces, things like that. And we know we do see them scattered all over the place. But as we get into this one battle, it should be a concentration of uh, bones and, and findings to pretty much substantiate where this great battle took place. And that's what we're going to be getting into today. We'll take a look here at uh, Baruch 1. These are actually out of the Sefer. So out of the Sefer, sometimes some of the, um, some of the uh, numbers are going to be a little bit off compared to our Bibles and, uh, and other books that we have. And that's why I took the pictures. Baruch uh, 1 and 20, this is chapter, 1 Baruch, chapter 3, verse 26. There were the Nephilim, famous from the beginning. They were so great of stature and so expert in war. So we got these giants who are experts in war, experts in making weapons. And that's something else we're going to get more confirmation of soon enough. Next, we're going to be taking a look here from the books of Og, Enoch, and the giants. All right? I'm reading about a call to war right now. Let's see what we got here. This will be the Lost Book of King Og, Chapter 3, The Giants of the 100,000 Giant War. This is the telling of the 100,000 Giant War, as transcribed by both Anak the Keeper and the bodies before Baal, and Anzel the Slayer, the smaller selves before Baal of the Moon. These are the deeds of the giants who fought with King Og against Nimrod. For our days were passed in wrath, and our war is a tale that is told. King Og sent throughout all, the all-known world for uncircumcised Rephaim to fight Nimrod and his circumcised army. And the word went forth to every uh, outpost of giants. And they came, the six-fingered, the mountain builders, the heavy weapon makers from the cold lands, the dragon siblings from the east, and the 20,000 giants that came with them. All in all, 100,000 giants representing every colony, color, and creed in the known world. Then King Og anointed his seven braids uh, and beard with oil. He stood before 100,000 of them, all in the high place of Baal, of the earth. And looking over his warriors and kingdom, he screamed with a voice that all Rephaim heard, for Baal of the earth, and for the loss of the moon child, we go to war. And when the moon was full next, war broke out between Og's and Nimrod's kingdoms. Og and his giants fought against the circumcised and the circumcised and, um, let's see, and Nimrod fought back. The Rephaim were driven on by the death of the moon child and their hatred of circumcision hardened their resolve. These are the Rephaim of significant stature that fought with King Og on the field of battle of the 100,000 giant war. So we got heavy we weapon makers. We got many giants coming together to do battle with one another. These are a lot of the things that have been hidden. And a big reason we're gonna see why is because they've definitely been trying to hide where these lands, you know, where these lands were, where these events were taking place. Again, it goes back to the, again with the movie they're stuck on Empire Strikes Back and they're not going to look at Star Wars. They're not going to look at what happened before. Okay? Because really, though, what you got to understand is if the Most High says these certain things were going to happen, if he's made these, um, <clears throat> definitely told you about what's going to happen here in the future. He made these prophecies. And he told these prophecies in the beginning. And people don't want to believe that these, you know, everything that's working out right now is what was prophesied to happen. They're going to want to hide that information. They're going to want to, they're going to, want to hide the fact that these uh, angels and their offspring are damned. That there will be no uh, chance at redemption for them. So that's why they put out the whole thing about, you know, A, we can all worship over here. We're all equal. We're all the same. No, because if some people are damned, 
they have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose for, uh, by lying to you, by not telling you the truth, because they're already damned. Some of you have a choice to make, and you're letting the ones that are damned, you know, to the eternal punishment, guide your thoughts. So they're not going to want you to know that there's people that are already, you know, preordained to suffer eternally. And those are the ones that are making the vast majority of the decisions of this world. And the vast majority of people are just following along with everything that they've set up. Let's continue. I just want to take a look at the bottom here. It says the 100,000 giant war at the bottom. There has been no violence likened to the 100,000 giant war before or since. So if you have in this kind of a battle with these huge monstrosities don't you think then that there would be you know things in the ground bones in the ground covered up because we know now at the end that the most high is going to allow the earth to help the woman like it says in revelation the earth is going to open up and give us um, confirmation of these truths that have been hidden for such a long time about where these events took place the vast majority of the world still has their eyes closed and they still look at the so-called Middle East as the um, where all these things were taking place, even though there's very little evidence to corroborate those claims. But still, people believe the lie, <clears throat> even though the vast majority of the um, evidence for these events is over here in the Americas, people will ignore that evidence and continue on with the lie. This also shows you how it was when our people, after they had gone through the 40 uh, years in the wilderness and they were coming into their, um, their lands in order to uh, lay claim to the lands of the Most High had already given to us. They had told you that they sent the scouts out and they came back with their report. And what did they report that they saw? They saw giants. They saw men that made the Hebrews look like grasshoppers. That means you're looking at absolutely huge, enormous beings that were still here after the flood. But this information is still hidden because the vast majority of these uh, bones, where were they found? scattered all over the lands over here. And of course, you know, there are going to be bones all over the world, but you don't even realize where do these bones even originate? You know, because they could easily have originated here and been shipped everywhere and then said that they were, you know, that they found them here. That they were discovered in all these different lands. We don't know because the vast majority of these things are hidden from us because there's a narrative and everything that has been told to us has to fit the preconceived narrative that they've already given us. But what's happening now is the Most High has preserved these writings. And now he's making it a point to make sure that we get them back. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're starting to slowly put the uh, story back together. We're starting to get the setting of where these things took place again. Most High is opening our eyes to be able to see the truth. That there were enormous creatures before the flood. And some of these creatures survived even after the flood. And some, I'm sure, even here, even till today. Hidden. Maybe about to make their presence known once again. We shall see. But here in numbers, okay, <clears throat> we have, uh, I want to say it's 33. All right. A book of numbers. I'm almost positive. Said, um, let me see here. Is it nine? I have to check my notes. But I'm going to read it right here 32 and 33. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Yasharala, saying, 
The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, which come of the Nephilim. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. So compared to these giants, we looked as if we were just like little grasshoppers. So now we have this in these accounts here of this great huge battle that took place between giants, over a hundred thousand of them, between the, again, the uh, Og and Nimrod's armies. And now we're going to be getting into a new book that shows of the evidence that um, pretty much they had found, they found many years, a long time ago, that proved that um, there were huge amounts of um, giants here. And they even found, well, I'm going to read about what they found. <clears throat> but the things they're findings back up what we, read, what we read here in the book of Og. We're going to be reading a little bit out of this book right here, the geography of the Book of Mormon. One of the subscribers contacted me in emails and um, recommended a couple of books. So I was on a quest to find this one. Looked on, um, looked on Amazon, couldn't find it. We checked A books, and um, they didn't have the picture, but they had the, um, the pretty much the the description box fit this uh, this book, so I just took a chance and bought it, and it just showed up. So now as we're reading it and studying it, there's a lot of information, and it's going to confirm a lot of the things uh, that we've already kind of figured out that the this is our land, this is where a lot of the antediluvian um, accounts occurred over here, okay, and these people have known about it, and they just hidden a lot of the evidence. So if people still want to keep on pushing Africa, 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 which is what we were told by the adversary the entire time, be my guest. But these other books are confirming that this is the land where these events occurred. What we're going to read first, before I, I didn't take pictures of this part, but I want to read it because it's talking about the lands of many waters and it being like a choice land. And they're pretty much saying a lot of this uh, lands of these many waters is actually uh, up here by the um, the Great Lakes. So I'm going to read pages eight and nine, and you guys are just going to listen for right now. And I took some pictures of some other pages for you guys to uh, <clears throat> to see for yourselves. Uh, okay, it says um, page eight. The earliest white men to penetrate the region described it as a paradise for the Indians, where only the most powerful nations of warriors could remain. So it kind of sounds like the powerful warriors, the only people that can remain here would probably have been powerful warriors or giants. The physical features of Rama Kumara lured both animals and men. An abundance of grass is found in the fertile valleys and plains. A vast variety of timber abounded, including sugar and other maples. Oak hickory, black walnut, chestnut, ash of different kinds, elm, butternut, basswood, poplar, pines, thorn trees of a pro prodigious size. A variety of fruit trees such as apple, peach, mulberry, black haws, grape of different kinds, raspberries, blackberries, cranberries, etc. Wild animals in abundance were to be found when the first white men penetrated this choice region such as deer, moose, elk, beavers, otters, minks, martens, rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, bear, wildcats, panthers, all of which furnish pelts and meat. So tell me the panthers are actually over here as well. And this is the things that the first white men, so if white men were already here, why would they be talking about the first white men? These are the things that they saw. Champlain and the early trailblazers were amazed at the great number of fowl and fish, turkeys, pheasants, partridges, pigeons, plovers, heathfowl, and Indian hen, wild geese and ducks. And the many streams and lakes were salmon trout, white and yellow perch, sheep heads, pikes, uh, suckers, 
large eel, and many others. As early as 1615, Champlain visited the land of many waters. Though he had um, been favorably impressed with, su with much of the country he had seen in America, he considered this the heart of New France. From his flattering description of this uh, favored land, we glean these comments from his letters. I never saw so many deer. We saw in diverse quarters immense herds of wild bulls and cows, their horns resembling in some respects the antlers of a stag. Our game does not leave us. It seems that venison and game follow us everywhere. Large droves plunge into the lake as if to meet us. Some were killed for the sake of amusement by blows of an ax. At the side of the rapids, we perceived a herd of wild cows, which we were passing at their ease in the great state. Five or 600 of them um, are seen sometimes in these regions in one drove. Frontenac and the other um, early explorers described this region as the best they had seen in the new world. One early explorer said that in the early spring months, when the lakes and streams abounded, with waterfowl, wild pigeons uh, come in such mighty flocks, so thick that they darkened the sky like clouds and upon trees, broke the branches by their very weight. These same natural resources that attracted the most powerful warriors among the Indian tribes lured the Jaredites and Nephites to this fruitful area. There is an abundance of evidence of an ancient aboriginal occupation in that favored land the chief monuments um, being the remains of fortifications that attest the skill of the builders. These ancient relics, together with the evidence of an extensive and ancient warfare in that region, are tokens of a highly civilized nation that thrived and perished in that historic land. A little bit more. This vast array of evidence tells the scientists who have studied it a story of bitter warfare the saga of a great nation being exterminated in the land of many waters. The accounts related by the historians and archaeologists sound very much alike the stories told in the Book of Mormon about the battles that took place in that favored region. So we got this favored region, and we got these battles, and we have these, um, and you're going to see some more information, some more confirmation about these great battles taking place um, in the land of many waters up there close to the um, the Great Lakes. Now we're going to take a look here. <clears throat> this is page 10. Yes. They can't always go by their, you know, the years that they say things are happening and how long ago and stuff like that. Because I mean, they'll give you some truths, but of course we know they're not going to give you the whole thing. It says, the oldest fortifications do not appear close to the southern shore of Lake Ontario because it is thought that the lake was much larger then than it is now. Turner has a long discussion of this subject, pointing out that Lake Ontario has receded from its elevated ground. On the south side of the ridge nearest the lake, he assures us, and on the hills in the vicinity are to be found remains of fortifications. Yet north of the ridge and beyond to the lake shore, not a single fort is to be found, thus indicating that the fortified ridge marked the ancient shore of Lake Ontario, where perhaps 2,000 years ago, a great battle was fought. At that distant time, Turner argues a great part of North America was inhabited by populous nations, highly civilized. These numerous works could not be um, have been supplied provisions without the aid of agriculture, nor could they have been constructed without the use of iron or copper. The Book of Ether, 1526, declares that the Jaredite warriors were men of great stature. When Limhi's scouts found the remains of the Jaredites, they were impressed with the large breastplates which they found among the ruins. So impressed were they with these large metal protectors that they carried some of them home with them. These were made of brass and copper and were perfectly sound. Surely these were the first people to work the copper mines near Lake Superior. So you got, you know, people finding, they knew that there was giants here, and they're starting to find a lot of these uh, breastplates that were huge. Okay? I'm going to read a little bit 
from 11, okay? It says, it is significant how the scientists have verified this fact, finding many giant skeletons among the oldest ruins. Turner mentions a skeleton being found at Aurora, which would indicate great height, exceeding by several inches that of the tallest of our race. This was found in the theater of the sanguinary battle, terminating in favor of the assailants. Now we're going to skip on over here to, uh, I'm going to read the bottom of page 11. And it's going to go right in here to tw page 12, okay? It says, uh, Harvey Rice describes the ancient burial ground that was uncovered in 1800. Concerning the giant skeletons uncovered in the mound, we read, as we read, human bones of gigantic proportions were discovered in such a state of preservation as to be accurately described and measured. The cavities of the skulls were large enough. Now we're on page 12. Okay, and their dimensions to receive the entire head of a man of modern times and can be put in one one's head with as much ease as a hat or cap. The jawbones were sufficiently large to admit of being placed as so as to match or fit the outside of a modern man's face. The other bones so far as discovered appear to be the equal proportions uh, with the skulls and jawbones, several of which have been preserved as relics in the cabinets and antiquarians where they may still be, uh, be seen. He concludes that a race of gigantic men once existed on this continent in the remote ages following the Mastodon and Saurian. Both plant and animal life assumed in many instances huge proportions and in all probability included in successive ages huge men. He assures us that these early people had acquired the art of manufacturing edge tools of copper and of tempering them <clears throat> that they would cut about as well as our modern steel implements. Squire mentions a legend preserved by the Iroquois that in a certain burial mound is the skeleton of a powerful giant. And you never know, you never know, could be, could have been Og or one of these others. He had a bunch of lieutenants. He had a bunch of uh, really um, powerful giants, okay? The first two chapters in the history of Cayuga County are filled with accounts of the people who built the forts, whose remains are found in that area. Different races have been born and swept away successively. He is convinced around the same spot where dwelt a race considerably advanced in civilization. Cayuga County yielded a rich harvest of giant skeletons among the ancient ruins, of which we read that entire skeletons have been found of people of giant proportions, the skulls and jawbones of which could cover the head and face of most fleshy persons of our day. We are told of a tradition which asserts that a destructive war was waged in this very section of the country, and with such fury and determination on each side that practically all of the warriors were slaughtered. Sounds a lot like that 100,000 giant war. As we continue a little bit long more here, Erie County has yielded a vast store of ancient monuments, including many giant skeletons, spear points, war hatchets, and other weapons that seem too large for an average sized man to wield. Bones of giant size have been uncovered. Similar discoveries have been made in Ontario County. Skeletons of an early age, including many of unusual size, have been found. Okay. Turner saw many of the giant skeletons that have been found in the land of many waters. He mentions thigh bones, which would indicate great height exceeding by several inches the tallest of our race. And that many of the skeletons found at Leroy, Batavia, and other forts in that area average one third larger than the present race. In 1922, on the Rose Farm, one half mile from Mormon Hill, a number of large skeleton stone implements, copper ornaments, and a, a copper ax of unusual type and other articles were found. At this historic spot were found many of unusual physique, tall, long-limbed, finely formed skulls, teeth finely shaped. So they have these, um, you know, they're finding all this evidence of these uh, giants here, talking about their traditions right here at the top, about a, of a destructive war, 
where the vast majority of the people of these in the battle were killed or destroyed. So then it would start to make sense that where you find a concentration of uh, giant bones in an area that describes this land as being lush and beautiful, that's where this huge uh, battle would have taken place. Now, if you look over in the so-called Middle East, you don't see any place that would, uh, you know, pretty much be in comparison to the land of many waters over here. You don't see that same kind of landscape over there. When you started to uh, talk about the land and how lush the land is and how beautiful the land is and how many people would fight over that land. But it fits perfectly over here. You have all the all these bones. You have all these weapons. You have all these fortifications. It makes sense that all that stuff was happening over here. So you take a look at the land of many waters. Where do you see the vast majority of these bones that are found? Now, of course, this is, you know, saying there's only a thousand. Maybe there's only a thousand plus that they're admitting to. But none of us have any idea how many, um, felt, you know, giant skeleton bones they found. But take a look at where the concentration of the uh, bones were found. Right there in the area where it says where it describes a place that looks just like the land of many waters. They talk about the Great Lakes being bigger. They talk about a concentration of many of the um, of these uh, giants fighting, as one of the natives fighting to control this land. And then you find a vast majority of these skeletons in that general area. So I don't think it's a big, a, too big of a stretch to think that these things were occurring, the battles of the giants. Og was here. Nimrod was here. The Watchers were here. Noah was here. Enoch was here. That whole line. Cain was here. It would all make so much sense that all would fit right there in this general area because that's where you find most of these bodies at. The land fits the description of a place where people were going to fight over. The bodies that are being found fits this area right here. Let's take a look at the bottom. This is a map of all of the thousand plus giant bodies found in North America since the early 1800s. The Iroquois, the Hurons, and the Omahas, and many of other North American Indians all speak of giant men who once lived and roamed in the territories of their forefathers. The newspaper accounts, town and county histories, letters, scientific journals, diaries, photos, and Smithsonian ethnology reports have carefully documented this. These skeletons have been reported from coast to coast with strange anatomic anomalies, such as double rows of teeth, jawbones so large as to fit over the face of the finder, and elongated skulls documented in virtually every state. <clears throat> so you're finding these bodies all over the place, but you see where the concentration is right here, where it would make sense to be the land of many waters because of these great lakes that were here as well. You know, so why is it so important to hide that this is where everything was taking place? Why go out of uh, their way to hide all this information? That'd be something maybe to have a discussion in the uh, in the uh, discuss discussion area. People give their opinion as to why is it so important to hide where everything originated from. You know, we have we're going to get into more information about how you know they even talk about how Noah was here, which we already know. But these guys are confirming it through their archaeological um, investigations. But a lot of this information is hidden. I found this book. This is the only one that I found um, on A Books, on eBay, as well as on Amazon. So like I said, the Most High is working to make sure that we get this information and we're able to uh, get it, bring it together with uh, our scriptures, our other, our other writings, our other historical writings, and be able to put this puzzle together. 
So it's absolutely amazing how all of this is working out. But you just, again, you take a look. You know, if you find out the, where the giants were, then you find out where the fallen angels were. You find out where, you know, these uh, fallen angels came and, and, and uh, took physical form and carried out their, uh, their, their plan. And you see where everything originated from as far as uh, our people. So I think this is an, an amazing find and uh, just more confirmation of this truth that the Most High is bringing out here in these last days. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.